Sydney Dilbury with HHS Action News, bringing you all the news we can. Thanks for joining us today. Here in Hoisington, the group focus is currently working on improving Pride Park. Peter McCool talked to Jonathan Mitchell and Jessica Bays to find out more about the park. All right, well a while back a group in Hoisington called Focus started raising funds for improvements at Pride Park on the east side of town. Focus is a group. It stands for Fostering Our Community's Unique Strengths. It's kind of just a name that we came up for our group. Um, contains about five of us. And uh, their goal was to replace all the playground equipment that was there and update the uh, little hot rod car that's out there and uh, also put some shelters out there. Taking out all the toys Eventually we're going to put a new play equipment in there. We'll have swings, slides. We have a huge play equipment and then two little ones that we've ordered. Um, we have little horse things that are being repainted right now. We have a race car that was here that was donated by um, Crutchers when the park first existed that we had to upgrade and kind of make it more safe and that'll be in there. So eventually we're hoping to redo the bathrooms, put in a gazebo and a couple of shelters, but that's definitely gonna be later, the phases. Um, you can call me or Shannon Stevens or call the city office and they will get in contact with the city manager, Jonathan, and he will be able to get in contact with one of us and it's as easy as that. We, will, we have meetings periodically. Anybody's welcome to attend. If you know, we have a volunteer day coming up. We have ordered the toys. They will be, we're going to put them in on November 16th, which is a Friday. And so if anybody wants to come in and volunteer that day, we would greatly appreciate it. Jim Sekovec, Hoisington Fire Chief, recently gave a tour of the fire station to the kind kindergartners. Let's take a look at how the day went. Probably for the kindergarten classes, we've been doing this, I'm going to guess right at 20 years, in the neighborhood of 20 years anyhow. And, uh, the kids always seem to have a good time when they come down to do this. Uh, it's, uh, we only get 30 minutes for each class, but it, that time flies by you before you know it. Just seeing the kids' reaction. When they come down here, a lot of times they're afraid of the firefighters. We usually dress up one of the a firemen as a, in their gear and with an air pack, and when the, when the kids see them, a lot of times they're scared. I've had kids that actually cry, and before they leave, we try to get it so that they're not afraid of us, because that's the thing. If they're in a burning room, we don't want them to be afraid of us. They want them, want them, we want them to come to us, helping people out, just like with the kindergarten kids. It, it's a great satisfaction to help people out, especially if you can save something for them or save a house or something like that. It's a great satisfaction. My favorite part of the job would be working with the people of the community, doing different things, and also working with my man. I've got 18 firemen on the, on the department, and we're all volunteers. And it's nice to be able to say that you've got this many people working for you that they will drop and run whenever there's something that comes on, whether it's a fire, a flood, we've been called out to do different things, and it's just great satisfaction to be able to do that. To wrap up the girls' tennis season, Dia Curtis had a 10th place, place finish at State in Hutchinson. Here is Dia and Coach Minnie's thoughts on the season. I think I did well at state this year, but I wasn't completely satisfied with it. Tenth place wasn't what I was looking for, but I medaled, and so next year I'll be ready to go back and get a better place. At state, she played well. She went four and three on the what ended up being a three-day state instead of a two-day. Um, she played a couple matches. You know, I thought she could have played better, but you know, she played what she played, and that's what we got. Tenth place is still a medaling place, so it was a great weekend overall. I've been playing tennis for fun my whole life, but I just started last year for real in high school. The most memorable moment was probably her match Sunday against the Thomas girl from Ellenwood, who she'd already lost to. And that match, the winner got to continue on, the loser was done. And she came back from being down 1-4, 2-5, 3-6, and ends up winning 9-7 in that match. I practiced every day after school and then even more afterwards I'd hit and now I'm going to start practicing every day in the winter and throughout the summer and through softball season be ready for next year. Her improvement has been phenomenal in my eyes. She went from playing doubles all last year to starting out this year at doubles and it took towards uh, the end of the season before she finally got comfortable really playing the singles and learning the actual singles game 
slowing down, taking her shots. And uh, I think it, by the end of the season, she was playing her best tennis. Number one goal, better than 10th place at state. That's what we got to shoot for. And I think she has a taste for it right now, too. After going there, she's ready to come back and, and place higher than that. My plan for the off season is to uh, get back in shape and stay in shape for next season so that I can place at state again. The girls golf team wrapped up their season with another trip to the state tournament. They traveled to Cheney, where Jordan Greer finished seventh, Ashton Nicholson 13th, and as a team, they finished eighth place. Amber Carr talked to Jordan Greer about the experience. I feel like this year's state was a lot different from last year's in that last year we went in with a lot of confidence and enthusiasm with high expectations of ourselves. And this year we kind of went in timid and not expecting a lot from ourselves, but it was definitely a learning experience and we had a lot of fun doing it. I identify my ball with my initials, JG. My favorite meet would be Dodge City because I shot my lowest round there. I haven't planned on it, but if the opportunity arises, I would probably play later on in life. The volleyball team took first place at the home substate and traveled to Salina on Friday, October 26th to the state tournament, winning against Marysville. Kelsey Brummer caught up with Coach Beengesser at the end of the season. Uh, first season here went very well. Uh, for our regular season as well as postseason, we've uh, accumulated a record of 31-8. and eight. We've had some tough wins and some tough losses, but all in all, this year has gone by very well, and the girls have bought into my program, my system, and uh, they've been real receptive of everything, and I couldn't ask for anything more. Um, we definitely had a rivalry with Ellenwood just being part of our league. Uh, we split with them this season. Uh, also Larned, we had a kind of a rivalry with them and as well as St. John too. And you know, I'd go as far as to say we, we also kind of developed one with Smoky Valley. Um, well, definitely a winning tradition and thankfully I was able to step into a program that already had a winning um, a winning tradition going forth for them and so that was um, very beneficial to for me to keep that that tradition alive. Honestly I would not change one thing because every high and every low all led to um, this point and this is what we've worked for, towards all season and it worked out in our favor. Congratulations to the team for making it to state and to Abby Sheha for making the all-state tournament team. The cross-country team traveled to Cimarron for regionals and Riley Kester finished in ninth place. This qualified Riley for state in Lawrence. She ran well, finishing 44th out of 99 runners with a time of 17 minutes and 39 seconds. Now let's see what the runners have to say. I've probably been running my whole life. Anywhere from like 12 to 15. I really like A6, 17, 12. In seventh grade in track, I ran the mile, and that's when I started running. We run about four, three miles a day. No, I have never ran a marathon. Best type of running shoe, I'm not really sure, but if I had to take a guess, Under Armour. Well, I started running as soon as I was born. Came out running. The best type of running shoe, I personally prefer barefoot, but it's horrible when you get those thorns in your foot, so probably... Yeah. A6. This is my first year, so being a novice, it took me about three weeks to start running comfortably. 20 minutes? Ah, there's no, there's no favorite run. Uh, like, I, I'm gonna try to run like 24 minutes, second to last. <laughs> the Cardinal football team walked away with a victory over Team P, 45 to nothing, in their final district play. They advanced to the playoffs and traveled to Holcomb Tuesday night. The Cards lost a hard-fought battle, 7 to 28. The boys ended the season five and five. The annual Hoisington High School Musical Variety Show will be held November 9th and 10th starting at 7 p.m. in the Lee Dix Auditorium. Here you can see many talents that are going to be exhibited by the high schoolers. You can purchase your tickets from any vocal student or you can also purchase your tickets at the door for $5. Let's take a look at some highlights from last year's show.
our new segment around the town, Michael Pata visited with Brian Kinscher about the Kinscher's Mule Barn. Had a restaurant and lounge in my hometown for about uh, two or three years, and I kind of wanted to get back into this business. And so I got an SBA loan and opened a store in Concordia, Kansas, because there was opportunity there that there wasn't, it was a pretty big town not to have a store of that kind. And so after that, I, uh, that was about uh, 2003, so I was there about eight years and I was kind of looking at uh, maybe sometime opening another store and I drove through Washington one time when we were looking around a little bit and I, I saw where the hardware store here was closing. I thought it was a fairly big town not to have a store and I uh, inquired about it and there was a building available and things kind of fell into place and so then we ended up opening a store here. Thank you for joining us today for HHS Action News. This is Sydney Bilbrey. Have a great day, Hoisington. <laughs>